Well, historically, human beings have organized their economic activities in different ways. We've had feudal economies. We've had slave economies. And we have capitalist economies. And there was a period of time when we had socialist or communist economies in the Soviet Union, China, and a few places in the 20th century. So there have historically been different ways in which we've gone about organizing our, our, our economic activities. And my sense is that none of the ones we've used in the past have always turned out to be all that desirable. That everything we've tried in the past has, been, has come far short um, of being the optimal way or the best way that we humans could actually organize our economic activities. And historically, we've basically discovered by practice, well, you do it this way, and these are the problems that arise. You do it this way, and these are the problems that arise. Um, but by the end of the 20th century, I think it became apparent to many people um, that just as feudalism was thankfully in the dustbins of history, um, that really capitalism um, you know, had many, many Many predictable problems, um, and in many ways fell short. Um, and that the communist alternative, the centrally planned alternative, um, which was the really existing alternative to capitalism during the 20th century in some places for a period of time, that it also was not highly desirable. Um, it had many shortcomings, different kinds of shortcomings, but serious shortcomings. And there came to be a time when the, when the communist countries, with the fall of the wall in Berlin, um, there was a time when then the question arose, well, is there really an alternative to capitalism? And many people said no. Many people who supported capitalism and sort of made excuses for its failings and or benefited from you know, the system, they were not the ones that were, were suffering the negative consequences of capitalism, um, wanted to convince the rest of us that, well, you thought you had an alternative, but now it turns out you didn't. Communism has failed. Um, there is no alternative. Uh, and we didn't believe that. We thought, yes, there is an alternative, and it is a kind of economy that has not been tried before, um, but let's sit down and see, given what we know about what decisions have to be made in any economy, what the options available are, is there a way that we could make our economic decisions and the, the, the organization would, it would actually provide us with, a, with a, a great deal more economic democracy than either capitalism or communism. It would provide us with fair, equitable outcomes. It would distribute the burdens and benefits of economic activity fairly um, or much more fairly than either capitalism or really communism, for that matter, actually turned out to do. Um, and that it would, be, it would be a kind of economy that supported rather than undermined what we could loosely call human solidarity. Um, that that was a major failure of capitalism because it really was a system of competition and greed. It pitted people against one another. And is that really necessary? Couldn't we organize a, a system of equitable cooperation that generated or, or rewarded solidarity rather than penalized people who tried to engage in solidaristic you know, activities with respect to others? So that was the goal. The goal was to put the lie to the claim, there is no alternative. Now that communism has failed, there is no alternative to capitalism, the famous Tina, there is no alternative quote that, that Margaret Thatcher made famous. Um, so we, we wanted to say, at least in theory, um, don't let anybody tell you that there isn't an alternative if we can think one through, design it, um, design the institutions, and very carefully explain how every kind of decision that has to be made in an economy, a modern, complicated economy with a large division of labor, you have to explain how would all the necessary decisions be made, and then look and see whether those procedures are going to have more or less desirable properties. And we thought, it's, we, we can see an alternative. Let's be sure that it's still there um, for people to think about. If, you're, if you become dissatisfied with the results of the present 
capitalist economy, um, then it's important that people who become disenamored of capitalism um, not buy into the myth that there is no alternative. Yes, there's an alternative, and it's feasible, and it's perfectly possible. Um, we wanted to prove that to ourselves. Um, when I say we, I'm basically speaking of two of us. Michael Albert and I sat down to, to do this in the 1980s um, when the sense was increasingly popular that, that there is no alternative. When people were losing faith, there was a more desirable alternative.